Today we shall be considering first question and answers on Physics 102, General Physics 2, University of Calabar for the session 2023-2024. But before we continue, I want to remind you about our upcoming live quiz competition right here on our YouTube channel by 11 p.m every first saturday of every new month and we had concluded the previous quiz competition and the next one that is about to come up would be on the 7th of september which would take place by next month you too can be celebrated just like the following students who were being celebrated yeah the students So I want you to try and be part of that quiz competition, save the date and the time. Let's move down to the following questions. The paper type, shade your paper type. This paper type I'm using is Bola. They had different names, but the paper type I used to answer my my own question is Bola. So if you are using this type, fine. If you are not, just try to check the same question. You will see it still on that your, your own paper type. I right, move to the second question. The least energy required to eject an electron from the metal surface is referred to as work function. The least energy required to eject an electron from metal surface is known as work function. This one says calculate the energy of a photon at a frequency of 7.8 times 10 to the power 12 hertz. Okay, so we are to solve for the energy and the Planck constant was not given. So the examiner expected the students to memorize the expression for the Planck constant. Okay, so if you use the formula E equals to HF, where E is the energy, H is the Planck constant, and F is the value of the frequency, you substitute accordingly. Then you arrive at the answer E equals to 5.17 times 10 to the power minus 21 joules. Why I decided to write this was because in the question, the index was positive and not negative. So I want to say that that question was not actually correct, but it was close. So this is the correct option. All right. So take note of that. This other one says... Find the magnetic force experienced by an electron ejected into a magnetic field of 12 tesla with a velocity of 4.5 times 10 to the power 7 meters per second in the direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. Assuming the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. This question, we have handled this before, and I expected my students to have attempted this. But then, I will still, I will still look at it. So, the force, we were to find the force. The field is 12 Tesla. The magnetic field, then the velocity is 4.5 times 10 to the power 7 meters per second. The charge is given as well so you are expected to pick an expression recall that the angle as well the angle perpendicular angle to the field okay is perpendicular perpendicular means 90 degrees 90 degrees to the direction of the rotation okay so if we pick the expression F equals to BQV sine 90 degrees, we should be able to arrive at this. 
All right. Let's check the next question. Calculate the magnetic force on a force 250 centimeters length of wire carrying current of 1.6 ampere. The strength between the two towers and makes an angle of 60 degrees with the earth magnetic field of magnitude 5 times 10 to the power minus 3 tesla. This was what they wrote. So I don't do I'm not too comfortable with the sentence, but I can bring out something from, from the equation we are to estimate the magnetic force F. And then the length is given looking at the unit. The unit of L in centimeter, then you have to convert that to, to meters. Don't forget, so I had to do that. I had 2.5 meters, and then the current was given 1.6 ampere. The fuel was given, and the angle as well, 60 degrees. So if we use the expression F equals to BIL sine theta, you substitute accordingly you will arrive at this answer. So if you want to substitute by yourself, you can do that and you will still get the same answer that I have written here. So the first one here is in standard form and the other one is in ordinary form. Question 6 says, the magnetic field is strongest at the north pole, the middle of the magnet, the south pole, none of the above. We have already discussed all these things and in a magnet, one would say that the magnetic field is strongest at the north pole and you forget about the south pole or I wouldn't say the magnetic field is strongest at the south pole and I forget about the north pole. And looking at this, we have not seen the option. The correct option is D because none of the above. None of the above is the correct option. If we are considering the magnetic field is usually strongest at the poles, either the north pole or the south pole, the two, the north pole and the south pole, and not just the north pole alone or the south pole alone or at the middle. So the correct option is D. This one says, the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor, A, increases with increase in distance, B, is unaffected by any variation in distance, C, decreases with increase in distance, D, none of the above. The correct option is B, is unaffected by any variation in distance. Question 8 says, the magnetic force experienced by a moving charge in the magnetic field depends on the magnetic field, the charge of the particle, velocity of the charged particle, all of the above. Looking at this, don't forget this expression, F equals to BQV. B means the magnetic field, Q means the charge, and V the velocity. So the magnetic force experienced by a moving charge depends on the three of this, this, these three quantities listed below. So looking at the correct option, the option we go with D, all of the above. Question 9 says, calculate the work done when a charge of magnitude 8 times 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb moves through a potential difference of 120 volt. We have to find the work done. The charge is given. Veloc uh, velocity is given, yes. Oh, sorry, voltage. Potential difference is given. And then we have the expression W equals to a half QV. When you substitute 8 
times 20 power minus 9 coulomb in place of Q and then 120 volt in place of V, you will get this expression 4.8 times 20 power minus 7 joules. Question 10 says, which of these factors does not affect capacitance of a capacitor? It means the rest will affect except one. A. Dielectric material. B. Surface area of the plate. C. Distance between the plates. D. Temperature. Which of these factors does not affect the capacitance of a capacitor? Factors affecting capacitance of the capacitor include the size, the shape, the area, and the nature of the dielectric material, the size of the material, the shape of the material, the area of the material, and the nature of the dielectric material. So, recall this expression, capacitance of a capacitor equals to, that C equals to XLM not A over D. The XLM here represents the permittivity of that material and the area and the distance as well. Okay, so looking at that, you can see that temperature is not included. <coughs> temperature is not included, so the correct option is D. 11 says... Two capacitors of capacitance, two microfarad and three microfarad are connected in series in an electric circuit. If a 400 volt direct current source is connected across the capacitors, determine the energy stored in the circuit. These are things we have handled before. The energy stored in a circuit, we've solved one here and we are still going to consider the quantities we have here and pick another expression to solve this. So we are given the potential difference here, 400, and then C1 is 2 microfarad, C2 is 3 microfarad, and the equation says it was connected in series. So this expression will help us to find the equivalent capacitance in series. So when you substitute the value into that expression and then convert, because they are in microfarad, microfarad, this is what I mean. This unit is 10 to the power minus 6. So by the time you simplify it, you will still get your answer in microfarad. So that would be in terms of 10 to the power minus 6. That's, so the final, uh, the capacitance would be 6 over 5 times 10 to the power minus 6. I just want you to do that. That's why I have decided not to do the computation. And when you pick this expression E equals to a half CV square. Looking at this, we have solved for C. So this is C here, and V was given. So we just substitute this and square the value of V. When you do that, you will get your solution as 9.6 times 10 to the power minus 2 joules of energy. Question 12 says, which of these is not a dielectric material? A. Mica. Oil. Salt. The correct option is D. Salt is not a dielectric material, but the rest can be used as dielectric material. Okay. 13 says, 3 resistors, 2 ohms. 3 ohms and 5 ohms are connected in series in a circuit. What is the effective resistance in the circuit? Effective resistance. We are just using the expression for effective resistance. We have 2, 3, and 5. When you put them together and substitute in that expression, you will get the correct answer, 9 ohms. 
The next one says semiconductors are class of materials which has a conductivity of about 10 million times higher than that of a good insulator. Conductivity, conductivity of about 10 million times higher than that of a good conductor. Resistivity of about 10 million times higher than that of a good insulator. Resistivity of about 10 million times higher than that of a good conductor. The correct option is option A. Conductivity of a semiconductor is 10 million times higher than that of a good insulator. 15 says, if an X-ray tube operates at 30 kV and the current through it is 2 mA, determine the electric power input. Determine the power input. The voltage is given in kV. Of course, you know kilo means 1000. So we write this in standard form. The kilo has been converted to 10 to power 3 volts. Then this one is 2 milliampere. The milli is 10 to the power minus 3. We have converted it to standard form as you can see. So if we use the expression to find the power input, P equals IV. Substitute the value of V, 30 times 10 to the power 3 volts, and the value of I, 2 times 10 to the power minus 3 ampere into the expression below, you will get 60 watts. Okay, let's move to the last question. This one says, the last question for this very lecture. I will continue with subsequent ones another day. This one says, in semiconductor, there are two kinds of charge carriers. A, electrons and valence bond. B, electrons and holes. C, holes and valence bond. D, none of the book. In semiconductors, the charge carrier is usually holes and electrons. The correct option is B. Okay, so if you want to contact me directly, you can use the email here. That's our channel email. If you are watching us for the first time and you are here to subscribe, this is what you will see. And I would, I would uh, advise that you endeavor to click on the subscribe button the way you have seen here. And when you do that, it will appear to be subscribed. Or you have been watching us for a while, but you have, you have not yet subscribed. You can as well click on the subscribe button. The reason is because you get notified in, whenever... I upload a new post. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.